estates are going through the, the, the price is going through the roof, but it's not. What's happening is inflation, right? We, we, we think real estate is going up in value, but we are living through inflationary times right now. And the value of money is going down. they say, uh, you don't know what you don't know. When you are an expert, you understand things. And when you're a student, be a student. And I am definitely going to be converting myself into a student today to be able to take in all the information that I'm going to be able to do with or without any other introduction needed. Larry, please bring in my show guest for today. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, my friend? Oh, I am so good, Mandy. What is happening? What is happening? You know what? Same day, different different week, different year. Here we are, 2021. And I think there's tons of changes kind of going on. I watched your your video the other day. Literally was like, had I had to scroll. You know, I've been... Uh, I actually picked up the the uh, creature of Jekyll Island the other day and was just like, what's going on? What is it going to mean? Where are all these trillions of dollars coming from? But how is it going to affect me? And that's what I want us to be able to, you know what, you always wear your real estate investor hat. How is this going to affect us down the road? What is hyperinflation and what does it mean to a real estate investor? <sighs> It's a, it's a, it's going to be a long conversation. <laughs> um, so, so uh, this, this subject has been coming up a lot in a lot of the, the podcasts that I've, I've done and people ask questions, um, you know, before, before I get started, I want to make sure everybody understands that everything yes. we're talking about here is speculation, right? Because no one really knows what will happen. Right. Um, back in March, um, Back in March, I, 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 I went on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, and I said, uh, life will never be the same again. This is back in March 2019. And I said, okay. you guys better get ready, pivot, and lean into this thing as opposed to, uh, you know, just freezing. And so I got a lot of slack for that. As you know, Mandy, when, you be, when you're a public person, the second you say something, you'll have people that are going to cheer you on and say, you know, that's right. And you'll have people that say, how could you say something like that, right? Uh, yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. And it's true. I didn't know what was going to happen, but it felt different. You know, if you can go back a year ago, almost a year ago today, we're going into March, right? And, you know, we've, it's been a year since all our lives have changed, right? Um, and so the other thing, the other video that I did was, um, you know, what, 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 what was my... Uh, my idea of what would what would happen in the market, right? And uh, I talked about um, the surge. A surge will happen before anything else happens, right? And that was back in April. And then uh, people also, I also got slack for that, right? And, um, you know, just recently someone was watching the video. They're like, how did you know, right? And it's, it's you know, it's these are all projections and ideas that come from past events. That's what a projection, a projection is. A projection is simply we look at past events and then we can, you know, based on where we are today, we can project what will happen, right? Now, um, back to your question with, the, with hyperinflation. So now everybody's, you know, it's on everybody's mind. Um, first of all, quantitative easing, okay, is a, is a word that is, uh, uh, thrown around a lot, Mandy, right? And it's just a fancy word, fancy jargon for printing of money. And so the very first thing that I suggest for people to do is to go and look, at, look up the history of money to see, you know, how the monetary system really works, right? And how the ce centralized system works. And you now you're based on that and based, you know, if you make, put in, technology into the mix this is where you get bitcoin this is where you get all of the things that are happening today in the market and it explains logically why the real estate is going out of control right 
And most people, you know, and I had this, I have to have, I, it seems like I'm having this conversation every single day. They're like, Good. real estates are going through the, the, the price is going through the roof, but it's not. What's happening is inflation, right? We, we, we think real estate is going up in value, but we are living through inflationary times right now. And the value of money is going down and the cost of everything is going up, but we don't feel it. It's just like you go on a, you go on a, you go on a vacation, two week vacation or a week vacation, you come back and you're like, you're 10 pounds heavier. I didn't even feel it. Like, you know, because it's happening, it's happening. If you're, if, if you're living through it and I love that, <laughs> I love that image. Because we're living, through, we're living through inflation. So we've always been living through inflation. 3% a year. I mean, it's happening, right? Um, the, the, uh, a loaf of bread 30 years ago was 30 cents. And now it's $4. $4. Yes. Yeah, you see, like I, I love those images because it's, it's powerful to see how money is being devalued. Now, yeah. what creates value, right? Uh, because if we talk about supply and demand, when there is, uh, w w for example, what makes Bitcoin so valuable is because there's only a certain amount that can ever be created. There's only, it's like there's no more, right? I mean, there's, right. this is the amount that we're ha we're going to have, and this is the amount there's going to be in existence, and that's it. That's all, which is creating the value of a uh, of Bitcoin to go up, or, in other words, the value of money, cash, currency. Is going down, and that's what's happening through uh, through through uh, real, in real estate. You see it because people are 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 there's you know we talk about um, what is the, the the what is inflation, right? When you have more money, more of those dollars chasing less of the things, right? And that's exactly what's happening in real estate. There's all this cash out there, stimulus, 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 money, money, money. But then Trillions. less inventory, right? And yep. so it, it just automatically the prices will will seem to go up, but actually the buying power will go down. Now the the video that you saw, I was simply explaining that the governments need inflation. Mm -hmm. And think about uh, the U.S. government. I think they're going to fifty trillion dollars in debt, right? Yes. Um, you think, and by the time they're done. They'll probably be at a hundred trillion. Do we? Can we like, even think about what a trillion is? Like, think about what a <laughs> what a. Do you trillion remember? Was. Do you do you remember a few years ago there was uh, I had a Zimbabwe million dollar bill. Yeah, and it was like trillion. worth ten cents. Uh -huh. Like it's just like who cares what the number is anymore? What 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 is even ten? What is even a hundred trillion? Like it doesn't matter anymore. It's so imaginary. you know, yeah. <laughs> Well, well, you know, if you go back in history, because, um, okay, let's talk about where this could lead to, right? And I'm going to say could because we, no one has the crystal ball. And right. um, the term that they use is kick the can down the road. And yeah. this is what we've been doing, right? We've been doing, kicking the can down the road and we'll say, well, let it be, you know, uh, 2022's problem or 2025's problem or 2030's problem. But at some point, We'll have to we'll, we'll have to realize that you know what like this paper money this fiat currency it, it doesn't make sense. So what could it lead to? It could lead to hype. I mean, massive hyperinflation. And who wins in hyperinflation? Well, all these governments that are in trillions of dollars in debt now the debt wiped clean. Think about that, right? Yep. And then and then you think, well, what's going to happen? Well, what happened in 1944? Your your audience can go and Google it. 1944. It was a reset of the monetary system, right? And everybody, uh, everybody came to a collective agreement to uh, to have the U.S. currency be the reserve currency, and right. it was going to be backed by gold, right? And everybody subscribed to that. Uh, by the way, I'm not an economist, right? So, you know, uh, please, this is just my opinion, right? Yeah. Uh, but these are facts. These are facts. 1944 is a fact that happened, right? And anybody can Google that. That's a, that. It, there was a reset. Same thing. There will be a reset, and we'll go to a, another type of currency. Could be a cryptocurrency. I think that's where the world is headed. 
um, maybe not ex specifically Bitcoin, uh, but maybe some other type of currency. So back to why this is relevant to us in real estate, because that's that's the that's why we're having this conversation. Right. Yeah. If they were if we were to hit, we're going to go through inflation no matter what, whether it's hyperinflation or just inflation, you know, maybe just a maybe like instead of 3%, we go to 10% or 15%. Um, we're going to go through inflation. So who wins Who wins through, through inflation? People that have good debt. If you have good debt and if you're able to leverage that debt, for example, into real estate, well, you know, think about um, think about a situation where your your property. I mean, you're, I mean, right now it's, it's happening. The properties are going up in value, and the debt seems small to when we got that debt in the first place, right? And so that's exactly why the 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 government are going to win because they have massive debt. But if the value of that debt reduces, so the value of money you know goes down, they win. So we're winning. We're winning. We're, we're winning. But how do you, how does somebody keep up to this? Hmm? How does somebody keep up to this? You know, like if you're thinking like you were thinking in 2018 or thinking like you were thinking in 2019 or even thinking like you were thinking in 2020, but we're not, it's different. And I, there's a part of me that has a little bit of a, a thought as to how do I keep people up to date with what's kind of going on? So you can't say, oh, I would, you know, like I have JV partners like, well, I'll take a deal like you, you know, like that one. And I'm like, yeah, that was in 2020. Like that was in 2019. Like that doesn't happen today. So how, what are some ways that people can kind of just keep up with this kind of newness that's going on? Well, um, one thing that we need to realize when the when the central banks start printing money, trillions, yeah. trillions this is an indicator that I mean, you can't shut the world down for two years and not expect to have consequences. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. because we don't have a cookie cutter like, oh, this is what happened, you know, last recession. Or, you know, we, this is kind of new. Right. I mean, this. I mean, it's not new. I mean, we had the Spanish flu, but we weren't, we, we, it was not the same world, right? We, we were yep. not living in the same world. And, you know, we were very much local back then. We're Now we're very global, right? The world is very small. So to answer your question, how do people keep up? You know, you got to see what the central bank is doing, right? You got to pay attention to, to interest rates because that's the only way they're going to be able to balance, right? People ask a question, why aren't interest rates going up? And the question, the, the answer is because that would cripple the governments. They, they're trillions of dollars in debt. Imagine, you know, interest rates go up. It, you know, even, I mean, it's easy to, to borrow a trillion dollars when it's you're paying 0%. <laughs> That's cheap money, right? Um, and so, you know, the, the, um, the, that, that debt, the, the, that debt load is what it is uh, people are worried about, right? And so when you see them printing money, you're, every time you print money, you're printing more and more money. You're devaluing the money. Um, in that, um, in that uh, Facebook Live that I did the other day, actually, well, I, I, made a, I, I, uh, I was using a, a baseball card, for example, right? Like yes. What, what makes it valuable? Well, you know, there's only two in the world. Well, that's going to the value of the of the of that card will, will be, you know, in the millions versus like if there's been millions printed. Well, now it's the value of that card goes down. Right. And so um, simple, simple economics. And if you're wanted to keep up with it, you need to see what the central bank bank is doing and what where are interest rates. So as inflation goes up. And it's, that's what's happening right now. Inflation, we're, we're, we're living through inflationary times. Um, if, if you go and you're, you, you, you might not feel it, right? Because you go to, you know, you're, okay, uh, an apple is, you know, still the same. But you have to think about what's happening now. If you talk to anybody in logistics or anybody in transport, they'll, they'll tell you prices are going through the roof. Well, we won't see that at the grocery store today. We'll see that in a few months from now. 
and it's 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 just going to creep up on us and at some point things are start going up in value so the government's job is going to be to balance that with interest rates right so the only way to to kind of like slow that down is to increase interest rates the problem is that interest rates have been low historically low for a very long time because we were due we we were we were due for a correction and these you know the 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 economy needs you know they needs to have an expansion they need to have a and they, there needs to be a decline right it's this is what keeps the economy growing because when interest rates are low people borrow right and when people borrowing are borrowing more then you're putting more money into the economy and you 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 everybody now is selling more goods and services so now they borrow to buy more of those goods and services and so this is like effect throughout the economy when interest rates are cheap the way they are right now where there's almost like historically low you know we're looking at we'll see negative interest rates in our lifetime for sure and so people borrow and then they go and spend right the second you you borrow to spend when you spend you are creating income for somebody else right so that's what keeps the economy moving right but what happens when you borrow today that means you'll you'll spend today but you'll have to withhold at some point in the future to to make sure you can pay for this for the for this loan or this debt right and so when you withhold in the future so when you're when you're spending today you're withholding in the future to pay back the 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 that debt that means you're going to cause that i mean it's inevitable a uh, recession right so then you have recession interest rates go up and then all of a sudden interest rates go down and then people borrow again and that creates another expansion right the problem is we were due for a recession back in 2019 and it's just kind of like extended into 2020 where we went into this holding pattern and um now the 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 government of the world had to print all of this money had to create all of this money to save their citizens and there's nothing wrong with that to the point where uh you know because we didn't know how long was it, that was going to last but um i think um i think we're we're i think 9% unemployment in in uh in canada right now pretty high that's that's really 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 high so what does this mean it means that we have to keep this people going i mean we have to keep the the population you know paying the rent buying groceries and so we have to create more money, money. and so the more creation of money and the longer the interest rates are low this creates inflation and at some point there has to be a, there has some the the and and uh, i'm sorry for for cursing on on your program mandy but the shit will hit the fan you know yeah yeah <laughs> so, yeah absolutely you know it's uh so so, so in this so time point, uh, we question specifically keep up with the reserve uh, the reserve banks keep up with interest rates and keep up with unemployment and vacancies right, right. these are indicators yeah. that will tell you where we are in the market today and without getting you know fearful so i have been uh, i've been sharing with people you know before i could have led with as a you know an investor to be like oh the returns are going to be this your roi is going to be this and now i'm like do you want to know what my tip is for 2021 <laughs> just buy the assets get the asset under contract knowing that it works with the numbers that they're buying today and anything that does happen down the road or prices that might go up um here's a scenario so as you're buying today it works the the rents cover the expenses you know you're breaking even maybe a little bit of cash flow and what most investors are like if i could only get all the tenants out then i could increase the rents and then my numbers would look good I'm like, you know, let's not lead with that right now in 2021. There's moratoriums on evictions and I, you know, I, I hold on to that. I'm not asking tenants to leave right now during this circumstance. But what if you were to buy, let's use some crazy numbers. Let's say you bought a million dollar building today and in 10 years it's worth 10 million dollars, okay? Just value, just the value of it. We could say maybe your net worth's gone up by a million by 9 million dollars, but how do the costs and let you know again you're not refinancing up to this 10 million let's just say you just held on to it 
And if you just held on to it, you're fine because the rents will stay. There might be a little bit of increase in, in rental rates, things like that. But your hydro will have gone up. Your taxes will go up. But now you want to sell it at a value of $10 million. Is somebody going to buy that? How do we know yeah. that we're... Yeah, so he here's the thing. When, um, when you create a scenario, and so... This is a really good subject that I mean, we, and this is up for. I mean, this is a great conversation that we're having because we're not trying, we're not like, we're not like, uh, uh, we're not predicting the future here whatsoever. But we we can we can use past experiences to forecast for the future, right? And that's yeah. that's exactly what we're happen what's happening right now. So when people are, um, so when people are getting these mortgages right now, right? And like you said, just hold the asset, right? Just hold on to it, right? Just buy it, right? Just figure out how to buy it. As long as the numbers work, they work, yeah. right? Uh, don't get your emotions involved and you, you get into the multiple offer situation where you're overpaying for something. It doesn't That doesn't make sense, you know? Even in, in a buyer's market, uh, you can overpay, right? So if you don't yeah. know what you're doing, you definitely need to get with someone that knows what they're doing. Right. Because it's not just all real estate is good. Uh, not right. all real estate is going to be good, especially if you overpay from the from the beginning. But if you can get yourself a million dollar asset. Right. And all of a sudden you you, you find 10 years later that uh, let's let, let's go. Let's go to five years. OK. okay. So yeah. you you bought this. The, you bought this asset right now and you, you locked in your one point. I think we're. At one mortgage that we got on a on a commercial property was one point four something, right? It's like they're giving away money, right? This is going to yeah. be historic, right? Um, a lot of these people, and this is going to this is a, this is going to continue to happen as long as interest rates are low. People were lock are going to lock in, right? And so, let's say it goes on for another three years, right? So let's say interest rates, for the sake of this conversation. Yes. Let's say interest rates will be uh, historically low and get even lower in the next three years. So that puts someone three years from today locking in at uh, maybe on the way up, right, at 1.5. Okay. Sure. And so now the interest rates start to go up, right? Well, you're going to have, uh, you're going to create a, a market where no one's going to sell their property. No one's going to refi because they're locked in. You, how? What are you going to do, right? What are you, What are you going to do? You're not going to sell your property, and so I think the as interest rates go up, I think the value of those pro, of those properties will will be sustained by the lack of inventory, right? Okay. Because as people are buying, they're locking in. That means that property is off the market for the next five years, right? And okay. so, and so, let's say uh, in five years from today. If you wanted to sell your million dollar asset, and I'm sure that in you know, depending on how inflation will treat us, that that asset will be six million or seven million. Well, because there's gonna be such a lack of inventory, I'm sure there's not gonna be any problem selling that asset. Gotcha. So there will be a even market. at a significant higher price. That's it, at a significant higher price, because there's gonna be a demand, and it comes back to the to the demand. Right. Right. And right. when you see people and it's like you just have to look at what's happening right now, the behavior, everybody's locking in. You're locked in. Right. You're locked in. Oh. And if interest rates, you're not going to exchange a one uh, percent um, for a five percent. No, no. But the only way that you the only way that you would. So you flash forward five years, your asset is now worth five or six, seven million dollars from what you bought for a million. And you go, hey, if I refinance up to, you know, a, a new value. Yeah, my mortgage payment is going to go up to five percent. But I'm also going to be able to release three, four million dollars right here that either could go on create a nice reserve fund, throw a million dollars into a bank account to account for a higher mortgage payment based on a 5%. And, uh, you know, but I just, I just find it really interesting that there's, you know, people are, they're still hesitating on, you know, is it a good time? And you're like, again, when it's have interest time. rates? It's the best time. Best. Our, our great grandkids will be talking 
about this, Mandy. They're going to be talking about, is it true? Is it <laughs> that they were giving away money? Yes. That's the question. That, that, that's what our grandkids are going to be asking us. Like, is it, or our great grandkids, they're going to, is it true that back in, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, the 2020, 20, the, the roaring 20s, <laughs> Uh, they were giving away money, and you're gonna your your answer is gonna be that is true, and then the next question will be what did you do during that time? Right. What right. did you do during that time? And you do not want you do not want the answer to be uh, well I I did nothing right. I you got know, worried. Yeah, you know I got I was concerned or whatever. But I'll say this: there's never been a need. In, in real estate to work with someone that knows what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Because being, in, you know, when we talk about hyperinflation, how do you protect your wealth? Well, you need to be in really good asset, a really good asset class. Well, let's look at it. Bitcoin. Well, uh, I don't know much about Bitcoin to, to be able to, to stand behind it, right? But you know, okay, some people believe in that and that's where they go. Okay. Um, people turn their currency into gold or silver. Great. But there's storage fees. There's no income. And, uh, you know, when, when people, you know, the, 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 la the most important thing, you know, when you see the government dish out money, they never said, we want to dish out money so you can pay your storage fees on gold. They dished up money so people can pay their rent and and, 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 and buy food and shelter and, and, and just survive, right? No one cares about your gold. <laughs> I went back, I went back to that. You know, you're uh, you know, I'll say to people, Premier Ford said, I'm gonna give you some money. I want you to put food on your table and pay for your shelter. And I was yeah. like, you know, like let's just remind ourselves here, we are rental housing providers. We are providing a basic, one of the two top basic human needs for people right now. Yeah. And yeah. you know, as long as the government's gonna give money to people, they're gonna say, pay for your food and pay for your shelter. And so it's not like pay for your food and pay for the storage of your gold. That's not what they said. Right. Yeah. So you, you realize that the industry that we're in is a very, very, very good industry to be able to provide a basic human need and the returns that we're going to make. That'll be something we'll be able to say. Yeah, I chatted with a gentleman the other day and he said, my my father lives in California. He plays tennis. And we were like, wow, I kind of, you know, my father doesn't live in California, play tennis. And he said he owns a like 40 unit apartment building in Los Angeles. And I was like, oh, he said, yeah, it's not as good as you think. He bought it like 35 years ago at $40,000 a unit. And now it's $400,000 a unit. But you have to buy, you have to buy 35 years ago. And he was probably in that same thing. Is this a good time to buy? Is this the right price? You know, and now he looks genius, but it took 35 years for that genius in probably 30 years actually he looked genius in 10 but it just built on and building 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 on yeah so i think no, you and, know and so the what i was going to say the asset class that everybody's is gravitating to is real estate but that poses a problem because you know uh, warren buffett said when people are greedy you should be fearful and when people are fearful you should be greedy so it's not all real estate. It, not all real estate is good. And never has there ever been a need to be with someone that knows. And I don't want to, I'm going to stress this like multiple times during this interview. Get with someone that knows what they're doing, right? And that's the problem. You have a lot of people that are emotional, never been in, uh, investors in real estate. Um, you know, refied their house at 1.5% and now are willing to buy real estate at any price, any price, which is creating the problem in the first place, right? Because if you are buying um, any asset class at any price, regardless of, you know, numbers or logic or reason, that creates problems that creates a bubble i mean it's happened in history it's it's happened over and over and over so not all real estate is good 
But if you get with someone that knows what they're doing, someone like you, Mandy, that has been doing this for years and years and years, you know how to buy, you know to get your emotions out of it. I mean, that's 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 the value. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. That's not why we were talking hyperinflation, no, but, but it's... Just, what, 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 I mean, that's... that. I mean, the, the thing is, okay, hyperinflation, should be, we be in real estate? Yes. yes. Should be debt, you win. Yes. But you can also get in trouble if you if you buy irresponsibly. Bottom line. Yeah. And so, Absolutely. So that, that's, I kind said of, the... that, that's kind of what I wanted to get to because I don't want to, I don't want to make sure people, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to um, be misunderstood in saying, okay, you got to run out and buy real estate just because there's inflation coming, right? Because not all real estate is going to work out, right? You have to buy the right real estate at the right time. That has to be logic and reason. And like you said, numbers have to work. I always, I said uh, recently, don't win the trophy for having spent the most amount of money on a <laughs> duplex. I, I, I use yeah. duplexes because they're just like, oh, 890,000 for a duplex in, in Oshawa and, you know, 800,000 for a duplex in Barrie. And I was like, don't win that prize, people. Don't win the prize for having spent the most amount of money on a duplex. Like you really have to be able to make sure still that the numbers still work, that you're providing this basic human need, but that you're not going to go backwards um, yeah. in your cash flow for, for anything, even if you're borrowing at 1.5, because there's that slight change and you're holding on to this asset. You know, I, you know, so as investors, yes, we have income coming in from our properties. I kind of worry about homeowners who are getting in right now and they're saying that, you know, nice young um, first time home buyers are buying in, they're buying in at a nice little price range. That's great. But when interest rates go up to five, if they, you know, like scenario it out in three to five years, you better be able to know that your income is going to be able to, um, you know, have that stress test up to the 5% interest. Yeah. I mean, uh, as investors, we always are going to have contingencies, reserves, and um, that's how I buy. I've been buying like that. I mean, I've gone. This is I've gone through several recessions here, right? I, I was I was in 2001. There was a mini correction, and I went through it, and I was never able to capitalize on that because I wasn't ready. I was I was uh, you know I was new in business, and uh, you know 2001 it just came too fast. But I saw all the opportunity. And I realized that, no, the next time I'm going to be ready. And so the next time did come, 2009, right? 2000, yeah, about two, 2008. At the end of 2008, going into 2009, by the time we hit the bottom, it was like 2010. Um, in Canada, we didn't feel it as much. And if you weren't in real estate, it was, probably wasn't, uh, it, it, it wasn't in your face as much as it was for me buying apartment buildings at that time. But, um, you know, I was able to take, take uh, uh take advantage of massive opportunities in the marketplace where people just i mean I, I i it was almost like night and day you would have these uh in 2007 2008 here in ottawa that's where i am you had these meetings networking meetings uh you know uh, like investor networking meetings packed yeah you know everybody's uh, everybody wants to know about real estate and then nobody cared about it in 2009 everybody just like whoo and so it was just, that was our opportunity right so these things are happening in the marketplace. And if you, if you have gone through, you know, the, the ups and downs of the market, for example, 20, you said it at the beginning of the, uh, of, the of our conversation, 2019, you, you wish you had those problems, you know? Yeah. And, and, and so like, we're just living in, we had to, we have to lean into this and this is, this is the way life is now. And we have to operate based on, what we're experiencing now mixed in with a past past experiences to to project and know exactly where we're going for in the future but without a doubt these would be the the years where i'm going to do the most acquisition the most yeah. activity i'm going i'm i've been the, the the i've been so active in 2020 is incredible like I, I couldn't, it, it's like, I couldn't even imagine. And yet I'm not overpaying. I'm not in multiple offers. You know, I understand which markets I'm going into. So 
there's always a way to get into the game, but you don't want to wake up and it's 2025 and you're going to be, oh, shoot, I missed it, right? You are one of the most boring investors I've ever. <laughs> Congratulations on how boring your investments yeah. are. You know what? In 10 years, I hope there's a little bit more excitement in your life, but <laughs> keep being super boring. <laughs> well, I, you know what? I, I, uh, I, 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 this stuff, I live for this stuff, right? I know. I live for it. You love it. You love it. And you know what? I love just you're you just remind people of the reasons why we do what we do. Run your numbers, look over the deals, create the security with reserve funds and and just, you know, be ethical in our purchases. Stay away from, you know, the masses where the masses are. You're like, oh, I'm not in any multiple offers. So I, you're just such um such a unique person when you share your stories. I always take away little Alfonso reminders. So oh, this has I been mean, no different. You know what, Mandy? You're you're awesome. And, uh, you know, I, I do these videos all the time. I mean, um, on my YouTube channel, I just sometimes, you know, uh, I just go on there. Uh, one, one live I did was a, like an hour and a half, you know? And it just, you know, I'm just sharing... I, I'm not trying by any means. Uh, I'm not an economist. I'm just, you know, if, if my video can help someone or this in, interview can help someone uh, make a better decision in their life, uh, you know, I think we've done our job. That's why you decided to create this platform. All I see uh, uh, on all of your interviews is good people. You attract good people, good conversations. Uh, and and people are getting a lot out of this, and so these are the types of the sh the shows that uh, people should be watching instead of the news, right? Because what the news does is it, they use scarcity to move the masses, right? And when like hyperinflation, it's 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 not necessarily bad if you know how to use it. And if, it, if you can use it to uh, to your benefit, right? And you should not, and this is what's happened with COVID. COVID, believe it or not, and, you know, obviously we want to be sympathetic to, to anybody that's watching yes. this that has lost a loved one or has or gone through like a, a really tough time. But overall, COVID has advanced society for about 20, uh, 10 to 15 years. Right. Where we are using technology Like, could you ever go back to the life you had in 2019? There's a part of me that was like, why was I going to the bank to sign for a document? Why yeah. did I go to Montreal yeah. to speak at a meeting? I was like, I love just these platforms. I mean, like there's there's a part of me that wants you talked about a two week vacation. And I'd be like, yeah. I want a vacation. You know, you know, but I what I miss is the hugs. Right. Yes. It, but uh, at the end of the at the end of the day, our world has advanced. Like humanity has is is advanced like yeah. ten years. What we're what we're doing now, we would have eventually have. We, we are eventually would we, we would eventually be doing it ten years or fifteen years into the future. Yeah. But it was like a band aid, Whew. and that's uncomfortable. Working from home? Like how many people now work? For, oh, I need a two bedroom so I can have an office. Like yeah. that just changes what it is we're looking for as rental housing providers. But who would have thought that that amount of people in the population and that, you know, cars are not as needed and like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Like, you know, do, do people really want to go back to sitting in traffic two hours, a, two hours a day? Right. Think about that. Right. It's so all these things that, that are happening as a result of, you know, being uncomfortable and it's uncomfortable to grow. But that's the only way to grow. Right. Yes. Is to, to, to be uncomfortable. And this this time is going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable to go from paper to something else. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going it's going to be uncomfortable. And there, a lot of people are, are going to resist it. And, you know, we're going to have a lot of problems, you know, going from paper currency to something else. But it's inevitable. 
Breathe it's into a, it. Breathe, breathe into the change. Yeah. Breathe into it. the the newness that this is going to be. Whether you're, you know, whether you are somebody that resisted it before and it like slapped you across the face, or you're somebody. Look at uh, my one of my JV partners, Mister Mister Marty Bile. Uh, love him with my heart. He uh, he commutes the whole time, and I remember our first first properties. I was like, my goal as your joint venture partner is to get you to not have to drive his hour and I want to say hour and 15 hour and 20 every day to work. He loves right. it. I mean, he loves where he's going, but you know, now you're having some changes. So breathe into it. We've done, you want to talk about some deals that look genius are deals that we did back in the day that you kind of, you remember those deals that you hesitated on because you're like, this is, you know, it's just barely the deal that I think. And, I'm gonna, it's gonna be okay. And you have hesitations, but you move forward anyways. Very, there's that push through, that little bit of discomfort, that little bit of uncertainty. And now when you're on the other side, a deal that you bought in 2016 is crazy super good deal now. And you've been providing housing for this many, for this many years, for this many people. And yeah, yeah. So no, it, it's it's crazy um, when you look at something through um the 2020 lenses versus the 2019 lenses <laughs> right and it's just it's just the way it is and then 2021 is going to be another adventure and 2022 will be another adventure and 2023 will be another adventure this is what i love uh going back to the hyperinflation i love real estate because it really it's irrelevant what currency we're using Right. If there's a if there's a, you know, and, and I and I made a, a little joke on my on that live um, a few days ago where I said if the new currency was chickens, people could totally pay their rent with chickens. It really doesn't matter because at the end of the day, think about all the different asset classes and think about these buildings and these structures. They're not going anywhere. Right there. You have you're you're still going to own those those buildings. And at some point. You know, whatever new currency, whatever, whatever crazy thing we're going to be doing in the future, people will still have to pay their rent. Yep. 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 And we're in Canada here, so you can't just live outside. So you're always going to need to be able to have a place to live. Mr. Alfonso, my, uh, not that my show is only half an hour for you. I always just want to be able to to soak in all of the information that you share with us. So thank you so much for Mandy. being here today. And sharing Mandy, with you, us. You are awesome. Love you. Thank you. Love, and Thank, love you. What you Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, I am going to make Mr. Alfonso a regular person that we come on here and, and open up our eyes and our hearts to be able to be reminded about what we do and the reasons that we do it. So thank you, everybody. We will see you next week on another episode of The Full-Time Investor. I am Mandy Brenham. Have a great week. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment down below, subscribe, Hit the bell to be notified the next time we're doing a, a, a video. And guess what? Like, share, dislike. I don't care! <laughs> Let me see how that looks. <laughs>